So thank you for coming. Um, I'm Dan Smoltz with Manalog Devices and have been chairing the uh, Displays Working Group. And a really exciting time now for displays, as you know, and television, 3D is coming, and we share that vision in the mobile side of it. So let me tell you a little bit about our story and what, where we're at now. Uh, to put it in perspective with the MIPI interfaces, we're dealing with uh, the display, uh, anything that's connecting the application's processor to the display, be it that display is internal or external. And as you know, with phones these days, there can be multiple displays as well. The work group, in order to really realize their message and their value, understand and comprehend everything from sourcing of an image, uh, be it a graphic user interface, or images or even video, all the way to where it's rendered. And those could be coming from a variety of sources. Uh, you have over-the-air uh, programming, now uh, sometimes even mobile TV, very exciting area, that could be coming to you over the mobile modem or even through the wireless LAN network. And that has to come in through a particular processor, generally some decompression and eventual rendering on your internal device. So you can watch your, your um, uh, casting. There's owner content. Uh, and I could be over at my kid's soccer game uh, taking video on my mobile phone. And that's something unheard of only just a few years ago. And display it right there and look at it. Uh, but there's also stored content. So I may want to download a movie and be able to play that while I'm on an airplane. Uh, after I've, of course, turned off the, uh, the mobile radio. But, uh, and that could be protected as well. So that introduces another complexity in the whole equation. So understanding the sourcing uh, all the way from processing uh, and then through the rendering, be it even going to the outside world, where I want to share that soccer video uh, with the friends or the family on the nice new HDMI TV that I bought, uh, and, and do that when I get home. And with the display resolutions these days that, that Jim's group is, is handling, uh, it makes the perfect sense. And uh, the video content, as you know, is just escalating tremendously. So, so turning that into a mission and what the display group's doing is we still stand behind uh, the industry standard interfaces that are between the processor and the display. And having those um, adds value to our OEM partners and allows them to produce a good, a good product at a, at a very low cost. Uh, maximizing that commonality across the, uh, the interfaces. So you saw uh, there's a lot of commonality, as Jim even pointed out, between camera and display. And, and we'll show it a little bit more. But you also want to evolve that, that display. You want to go from a product that is 2D now and perhaps drop in a 3D display without changing a lot of the architecture. And in fact, we think that's quite possible. We think that's really very realizable, maybe even within a year. Uh, but still accommodate a variety of architectures, because you want a low-cost phone and you want a, a feature phone as well. So to that extent, this, this is a, a borrowed slide from our display serial interface, but really it works the same way as, as another architecture. So today, we still recommend both uh, the display serial interface and a, a link called the Display Pixel Interface that is, that is a parallel con uh, version. Uh, display par uh, parallel interfaces are shipping in phones today, as are serial interfaces. And we support both of them, and, and our members are quite happy with those and, and use them in, as they choose to. So that is the making available architectures uh, you know, common across the, uh, the standard. Then we have, um, you know, within the serial interface, they're still very efficient packet protocols. They have error correction for video mode, especially when, you know, if an error comes up in a video, you want to correct it right away. You don't want to have to go back and get the data, as you probably well know. Uh, so you need a low protocol overhead. You need channels that support multiple displays. And those are things called virtual channels. Uh, so you can have multiple displays in the phone, displaying either the same content as a split display or different content. Uh, we have video modes, so type 1 through 3 are different kinds of displays, depending on how much frame buffer you have. Um, any of those can be supported with the display um, 
display architecture. Uh, you can report stand uh, the panel status as well as any errors, let's say an, an error that came over through uh, and that's reported through an ECC or fixer in ECC. And then there's a command set. Um, Jim introduced that concept a little bit last uh, presentation. The standard command set enables a lot of things. It, it's one of the benefits and one of the, the huge advantages that MIPI display brings in that it eases integration, it simplifies the driver. It doesn't, and, and a lot of times OEMs may want to customize the driver, but in the sense that I can flip or rotate the display instantly with a command. I can uh, do a reverse image. I can do a variety of, of operations on character as well as graphics and images. Um, all that can be accomplished through standard commands and no customized drivers. And all that on top of a PHY running in the vicinity of 500 to maybe even 800 megahertz, megabit per lane. Um, that's giving you well over 3 gigabit today. That is plenty to support the uh, high definition video uh, in HD uh, 1080p. And uh, so you can see why uh, we look forward to even faster displays. So if you can do HD now, uh, you may want to do 3D HD later on. And our vision is pretty clear on that. 